And joining us now to talk about how his department is handling the situation is Sheriff Paul Penzoni of Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Sheriff, people have a right to sit in a chair in a parking lot. They also have the right to bear arms. So at what point does that cross a line and become voter intimidation? You're correct. You know, we have rights in this nation, and although there may be certain circumstances that can cause someone to feel uncomfortable, it really is the behavior of that individual that crosses the threshold that would be a criminal act, and it would be maybe some statements that would be threatening in nature. It is, are you displaying that weapon in some way that is portrayed as more aggressive, as though you're trying to prevent the person from casting a vote or questioning them during their vote, or are you trying to influence their vote through some form of intimidation because of your mannerism? So it is, it's a, it's a difficult, definable area, but it's something that we're working the prosecutors on every day to make sure that we are proactive in this effort. And you said, quote, you can be intimidating without committing a crime. It doesn't make it okay just because it isn't a crime. How can your department prevent this kind of intimidation if it can't always necessarily be labeled as criminal? Well, unfortunately, I think the number one tactic for our office is presence, making sure that we have a presence there without adding to the problem. What I mean by that is people don't want to be bothered when they're voting. They just want to be able to cast their vote and go about their business. It's, it's a right that we all have in this nation that we, um, we fight to protect. So having a uniformed deputy or officer in that space can be uncomfortable for some also because they feel like suddenly it's a military state. So I don't want that to be the impression, but I, w I want the impression to be we are here to protect everyone's rights and the right to vote is one of your greatest freedoms. So we care very deeply about it. So I'm dedicating resources to make sure that those who wish to be present and have this, you know, this um, empowerment, self-empowerment of we're overseeing the ballot boxes that they know we're watching them to make sure they're behaving appropriately and that for people who want to come and go and vote peacefully that they will not be interfered with in that process. Yeah, I appreciate the thoughtfulness that you're expressing about this. Uh, as our reporter Marky said, uh, you forwarded two cases to prosecutors for criminal charges. Why in those two cases did it cross the line in your mind? Yeah, and I appreciate you bringing it up because I, I misstated that yesterday. Those cases are under investigation. They have not yet been forwarded. But we have a very close, cohesive relationship with our prosecutor's office here. And we want to make sure because election law is so unique and specific that before we act on something, unless there's an urgency, that they are actually reviewing it to ensure that a crime has been committed and we cross that threshold. So those cases are still under investigation. They've not yet been forwarded. But if we deem that it's appropriate for there to be charges filed or possibly prosecuting someone and making an arrest, they'll be our partner in that effort to make sure we're acting lawfully and constitutionally. Appreciate uh, that, that clarification. In those two potential cases, was it the uh, video recording in public th that uh, crossed the line? Was it harassment? Or, or why in those two specific cases uh, is that consideration happening? Yeah, th there was a unique element in one, of, in one of the cases, which I think was probably a little bit more significant, where the people that were there watching the polls had actually covered up their license plates, which were parked and stationary, and they covered them up with some, some flags to disguise their license plate. Well, that's not unlawful unless you're on the roadway and moving. Uh, but then there was some opposition, a person that was there basically watching the poll watchers took it upon themselves to go and try to remove the flags. And that's where a confrontation occurred. Uh, and our investigators are trying to determine right now, was there an assault? Was it defending your property? And, and where was the line? But for me, if I could just express this, we're so much better than this to treat each other with uh, this level of disrespect, to be confrontational during a time that we should be celebrating, you know, democracy and voting and choosing new leaders. The idea that as Americans we're divisive and fighting with each other instead of protecting what is so fragile and pure about democracy within our republic, it, it, it perplexes me and it frustrates me to think that I'm dedicating resources for the sake of babysitting poll sites and, and, and drop boxes, which I know I stated earlier, but I don't know how else to define it. And I wish we would just find our best selves and, and come forward with that. Yeah, well spoken. Your point is well taken. Sheriff Paul Penzoni, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.